Hey, thanks for coming by to hang out, man. I... Sorry it's a mess, it's just, um... It's been a bit of a rough year. Did you want to hear about my combo? No, I... Uh, never mind. I guess I just needed someone to vent to. You know, ever since the meeting of the Flip Monsters got cancelled because of COVID. You know, another year without Jarelf. I'm really concerned about Shadol ever since she moved in with Eldlich. And Subterror has been insufferable ever since the new format started. Go for the fifth best deck! <laughs> Three formats in a row, baby! If you're not back in VW, I wanna talk. I guess I can take solace in the fact that no matter how bad things get, Flip Monsters will always be the second worst summoning mechanic. <laughs> At least we're not rituals, am I right? Oops, sorry, I thought this was my apartment. But I don't live like this. Who are you? Ah, sorry you had to find out this way. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I have once again let you down. Usually, when I make a pledge not to read an archetype, it pans out well. Konami prints a lot of garbage with a lot of text. Unfortunately, this time, that text included some of the most powerful effects ever printed. It is with a heavy heart that I must admit, I have read the Drytrons. That said, I can't guarantee I read them very closely, so I know you'll all excuse any combo lines I screw up, misplays I make, or lethal I miss in the comments below. Presenting Drytron. Before we begin, if you're not yet subscribed, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll start January off right by finally letting Sadie and Jillian take over the channel. So here's the list, and as usual with any meta-relevant deck, I've lifted the list from someone who actually knows what they're doing. This is Elisa's top 16 list from the most recent Remote Duel Extravaganza. A link to her video is in the description. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. With that, let's do Drytron. Before we talk about Drytron, however, a quick primer on Rituals. Rituals are the weakest summoning mechanic of all time. Pendulum stands cry gallons of tears when their 18th consecutive playable gets hit, preventing their 12th consecutive deck from being tier 1, but Ritual fans have been wringing blood from Necroz since 2013. In fact, with the exception of that deck, two weeks of Gishki FTK, and early format Herald bullshit, Rituals have pretty much never been playable. Because of this, Konami has seen fit to give them some of the most powerful support cards ever printed. The Incantations, Prep and Pre-Prep, Herald, and as you'll see in this deck, Cyber Angel Benten. And most of these are not once per turn. All Rituals need is one halfway competent archetype, and suddenly these stop being powerful support for an underpowered archetype, and start to become a problem. Enter Drytron. Drytron are a series of ritual-adjacent monsters that seem to have been developed without an understanding of the tools rituals already have. They contribute a Drytron or a ritual to summon themselves from the hand or graveyard, then do things like add a ritual, a spell, draw cards, etc. Tributing for cost, shockingly, triggers Benten, which often means you're never out of material for their effect, always able to find game-ending threats like Ruler or Extenders like Manju, and are able to facilitate the ritual boss of your choosing. Some duelists, like Jesse Cotton, have had success with Herald, but I would rather claw my eyes out, then watch Ava resolve. As a result, we're playing Elise Davis's top 16 list from the most recent Remote Duel Extravaganza, which plays my favorite rituals of all time, the Megaliths. As a final note, with the exception of Drytron Nova, which will cost you a pretty penny, this main deck costs about $20 total. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, our Ben 10 searchables, Ruler, Valkyria, and Manju, followed by Dawn Knight, who will equip to a Union Hanger to send a Drytron to the graveyard. Next, we're playing 3 Ash Blossom, the single hand trap in the main. After that are the Drytrons, 3 Alpha, which searches a monster, 2 Zeta, which searches a spell, 2 Delta, which draws a card, and 2 Gamma, which summons from the grave. Next, our Cyber Angels, 3 Ben 10 and a Natasha, a mind control, and our Megaliths, 1 Ophiel, 2 Fool, and 2 Bathor, and our spells. We're on 3 Cyber Emergency, a Drytron Searcher, 1 Foolish, 3 Nova, 3 Prep, 
Meteoris, Cald, and three Fafnir. In the extra were on Zeus, Tornado Dragon, Downard, Abyss Dweller, and Lyralisk Independent Nightingale, to make into Zeus, of course, followed by a link package of Access Code, Appaloosa, Nightmares Unicorn, Phoenix, and Cerberus, Geonator Transverser, don't sleep on this card and watch your zones, Union Hanger, IP Mascarena, Link Haribo, and Anima. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against The Pile, a deck that I am extremely excited about. I think a better way to describe it would be Trap Trick Turbo, but it plays Eldlich, enough ways to make goons to find it with relative consistency, Dogmaticas, and even a Shadal package. Unfortunately, it doesn't do particularly well going second against a deck like ours. We're going to begin with a copy of Nova to get an alpha to our side of the field, which will link away for a Link Rebo before activating its effect, and what do you know, we already drew the Ben 10. We'll activate Ben 10's effect for a Ben 10 before activating Delta, pitching a Ben 10. We'll reveal a card in our hand off of Delta so we can draw a card and activate Ben 10's effect as well. We'll activate Manju's effect in order to get the copy of Meteorus and go into a Union Carrier. We'll activate Union Carrier's effect in order to equip a Dawn Knight, and because we already have the Ritual spell, we're going to send off the Dawn Knight a copy of Gamma. We'll trigger the effect of Ophiel as well in order to get a Fool to our hand before activating Gamma's effect, pitching that Ben 10 in order to bring back a monster and then triggering the Ben 10 for a copy of Chaos Valkyria. Now we have advanced knowledge of what our opponent is playing, so I make a play here that you would never make blind. I'll go into Tornado Dragon against the Trap Card deck. I know it's a little sus, but games 2 and 3 this would probably happen. Our opponent's going to go into a Pot of Extravagance and activate Disciple of the Nadir. That's going to send an Entis, but oh, I drew the one of called by the Grave. Too bad for you. Our opponent is afterwards going to activate Cursed Eldland, and it kind of sucks to Tornado Dragon this because I don't want to give them more material in the graveyard, but of course it doesn't really matter because I just want to keep that big golden boy out of their hand. They're going to bring it back with a copy of White, we will activate Link Rebo to prevent our fool from dying, and then as they proceed to the end phase we'll activate Baythor and pop that entire back row. Now this is a little risky because of course Eldritch uh, traps float, but not many of them are Eldritch. They'll activate Conquistador at end step in order to get a copy of Scarlet Sanguine, and I think I can probably just prevent them from activating it by tribute summoning the copy of Vanity's Ruler as quickly as possible. We'll activate Alpha's effect in the graveyard, and then activate Gamma's effect in the graveyard, pitching the Alpha. We'll go ahead and get as many materials on our side of the field as possible before recycling Meteoris. We're going to bring out this Natasha. Now, it can't be summoned from the graveyard unless you summon it correctly once, so we'll go into Anima, and then we'll activate Natasha, banishing this Ben 10 to take our opponent's last remaining monster, and getting in for well over lethal. What I like the most about Drytron is that while it's an incredibly capable combo deck, it is by no means unbeatable. If your opponent's packing something designed to go second, you might have a bit of a problem on your hands. Case in point, our opponent for Game 2 is playing Crusadia, a deck that has actually topped in the most recent format. I have no idea how this was allowed to happen. We're going to fire off a copy of Preparation of Rights and then fire off an Alpha. Alpha into Ben 10 is pretty much exactly where you want to be. We'll add a Ben 10 to hand before activating Cyber Emergency. The last thing we're missing is Meteors, so we'll use Zeta to get it and activate Ben 10's effect in order to get a Vanity's Ruler. The game is about to be over. We'll go Union Carrier into... Oh god. Oh my god, that ends our turn. Okay, uh, we, I guess, can Baythor into Ophiel, adding a Baythor to hand, then Ophiel into Fool, adding the Ben 10 back, so we can have a three material Baythor on our opponent's turn, but that kind of has to be enough. Unfortunately, it isn't. Zoo King Alpha will make quick work of our Fool, and then they'll normal summon a Leonis. Okay, out comes Magius and Arborea. That'll trigger the Magius for a Draco. They'll go into a Regulex, then summon the Draco at a Link Point, adding a Power to Hand, and unfortunately this Leonis back to Hand as well. They'll go into Equimax, summon two Materials at Link Points. These increase the damage, but don't change the math, because our opponent is not attacking into one of our monsters. In Main Phase 2, they'll go Magius into Astrum, set a Power, and pass. This is quite bad. Okay, we will activate Alpha's effect, pitching the Ben 10. We can trigger the Ben 10. We have very few targets remaining, but Manju is one of them. We'll activate Zeta's effect, bringing back the Zeta and overlaying for Lyranalisk Assembled Nightingale. We get in for 400 twice, then in main phase 2 can make a Downard and a 2 material copy of Zeus. They will power, so we won't be able to do it this turn. As a result, we can freely summon Manju and then pass. In draw phase, we're going to go ahead and fire off this copy of Double A Zeus, and they'll activate Astrum's effect to put it back. That's no big deal for us because it turns off their Zoo King Alpha. For turn, we draw Gamma. We might actually be able to do this, we just have to assemble lethal, I am just very bad at doing that! We'll activate Gamma's effect, I should have summoned an attack position here, I didn't know Gamma was allowed to. We'll go for Ben 10, and then we'll go for Zeta in Graveyard, we'll activate Meteorus Drytron's effect, we'll activate it in order to bring out the Natasha so it's been summoned correctly once, we'll summon the Valkyria, but our opponent has no monsters with which we can steal, so I guess we're just getting in for this amount. In Main Phase 2 we can activate Natasha's effect in order to gain 900 life points, make a Baythor with a Fool and end on IP Mascarena. It's not pretty, but it is Unicorn plus Baythor. 
Unfortunately, our opponent has drawn not only Lightning Storm, but off the top an Infinite Impermanence. We are at their mercy once more. They're going to go into Magius, then summon Zoo King out the at link point. Come on! They'll go Regulex into Draco, then trigger the effect of Regulex, this time adding Testament to hand. God, I hate this card. They're going to go into an Equimax and then a Leonis. This time it will provide this Equimax with Piercing. I'll activate Fool as a comedy joke, I suppose, and our opponent will draw three cards, one of which is power. No big deal, we still should be able to do it. We're going to activate Nova, that's going to summon from deck a copy of Delta, I believe the last one we're missing. We'll proc that power early with Natasha's graveyard effect, and now we can bring back Natasha, activate Meteoris, and get off to the races. It's Gamma time, out comes Gamma and Zeta, we'll activate Delta's effect, we need a sweet rip, and... Ooh, Fafnir is one. Obviously, we've already activated Nova this turn, but the Meteoris is now impossible to negate. Our opponent tries anyway, but it doesn't work. We'll go for Ben 10, gain 900 life points, and then activate Bathor's effect to summon a Fool. We'll activate Fool's effect to bring back the Bathor, and we just need one more material here. That Zeta should come out, and out comes Unicorn, out comes Access Code. Sometimes you just need a big beat stick. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Virtual World, and they're going first. We have no hand traps, so good luck to them. They're going to activate Kaloon in order to set a Chuche. They'll activate Lili's effect, and yeah, that's uh, that's that's full combo, isn't it? They'll activate Qinglong's effect in Graveyard to get a copy of Lulu. They'll activate Lulu's effect. Unfortunately, they also have a copy of Nyan Nyan in Graveyard, so they'll go ahead and bring that back as well. They're going to go into a Ravenous Crocodragon to draw a card, triggering the effect of Nyan Nyan in order to shuffle back the Qinglong, and then they'll activate Chuche in order to modulate the level of this Lulu. They'll activate ZZ's effect, and that is that that does it. Yep, there's Shen Shen. There's True King of All Calamities. Okay, well maybe they'll forget that their card has text on it. I suppose we'll activate Faf. We'll activate Nova. We're going to get from deck a copy of Zeta. We'll go into Link Haribo, at which point our opponent, unsurprisingly, will True King of All Calamities, which will kill us. They're going to activate Chuche on our Link Haribo. Was that really necessary? They're going to draw for turn a Pot of Desires. Sheesh. They'll activate Lulu's effect, targeting the Chuche, and then afterwards they can activate the Qinglong effect in the graveyard in order to get a copy of Lili or Lao Lao. I think I missed it. They'll activate Lao Lao's effect, bringing back the Lili, then Chuche's effect to level modulate, and uh, then they can make Stardust Charge, draw a card. Is this really necessary? Out comes the Shen Shen, and that's the end of the game. Okay, that's the end of the game. Okay, this is the end of the game. This is the end of the game. Please just end the game, my god! Okay, this is this is way over 8,000. Let's go next. So, it's time for game two, and this time we are going first. Endure my combo! We're going to fire off a copy of Preparation of Rights in order to get a Cyber Angel bent into hand, then we'll pitch it for an alpha. Why even bother going for Cyber Emergency? They're going to Ash Blossom, but we drew the Gald by the Grave. Feels good! We'll add a Ben 10 to hand, then we'll activate Zeta's effect, pitching the Ben 10. We'll trigger the effect of the Ben 10 in the graveyard in order to get our last remaining Ben 10 before going into a Union Carrier and equipping it with a copy of Dawn Knight. No Ghost Ogre this time. We'll Meteors to go into a copy of Ophiel. We'll trigger the effect of Ophiel and the effect of Dawn Knight so we can get to our hand a copy of Fool and send to the graveyard a copy of Gamma. We'll activate Gamma's effect, pitching the Ben 10 and bringing back a Zeta before activating Ben 10's effect in order to get Vanity's Ruler. We'll finally Cyber Emergency for a copy of Delta, the last one we haven't activated, before Ophieling into a Fool to get the Ben 10 back. That way we can use the effect of Delta to pitch the Ben 10 and then fail to draw. I sequenced these wrong, I believe. We'll go into a Vanity's Ruler, bring back this Ritual Spell, and go into a Link Haribo. We'll pass it back to our opponent and wish them good luck. They're going to lead with a copy of ZC, but unfortunately all it does is trade for the Link Haribo. In Main Phase 2, they're going to set this copy of Triple Tack, and at end of Main Phase, we'll go into a Bathor, trigger the effect of Bathor, and pop the entire field. That should be all she wrote. For turn we draw, oh my god, a Fool even. We'll activate Alpha's effect, pitching the Fool to bring back Alpha, we'll get a copy of Bathor to hand, and our opponent will concede. So it's time for that old imported game three and... <laughs> I mean, that's virtual world. 30% of your hands just look like this. They're going to activate Qinglong, set Nyan Yan, and pass the turn. Now, they do have a couple of hand traps we're going to have to play through. We drew a Zeta. We're going to activate Alpha first, pitching Ben 10, just raw drawing everything here. We'll trigger the effect of Ben 10 in Graveyard for a Ben 10 before activating Zeta. We get a Meteoris here, and maybe that was worth ashing? I don't really know. We'll go for Ben 10 as well for a Ben 10 before going into Union Carrier, equipping it with a copy of Dawn Knight, and then activating Meteoris so we can get this Ophiel out of our hand, triggering the Dawn Knight and the Ophiel. They're going to Ash Blossom the Ophiel, but we very wisely chain block the Dawn Knight so we can activate the effect of Gamma in Graveyard, triggering the effect of Ben 10 to get a Vanity's Ruler. This problem a slightly earlier Nibiru than otherwise could be done, so we could fire off the preparation of rights for a fool, then activate Meteor, sending the Zeta for a fool, triggering fool to bring back the Ben 10 and having Bathor live. We'll pass back to our opponent, who unfortunately does draw a virtual world, but fortunately has drawn the worst one. They'll activate the effect of Lao Lao, at which point we will fool, going into Bathor, we'll pop their entire monster lineup. We pretty much have lethal on the crackback with the huge token, and our opponent will concede. So we're back, and yeah, it's good. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, this is... this is the deck that'll cause Ben 10 to get banned, yeah. 
I've never seen a lack of hard once per turn matter more, and this includes the one that isn't on Zeus. Two, it's super flexible in terms of an end goal. Against trap decks, you can go into Bathor, and against monster decks, you can sit on a ruler and dare your opponent to open Infip. And three, I know it doesn't factor into these games, but the ability to play either Herald or Megalith means that an opponent will have to adjust their play and board style from round to round, even against the same deck. It makes sideboarding extremely hard. And the cons. One, it's got some pretty clear weaknesses. Singular hand traps do screw up the combo quite frequently, especially if you can't land an early Herald. Turn enders like Droll and Barrier are a particularly nasty problem. Two, it's not nearly as good going second as it is going first. This means that unlike decks like VW that can flex a Qinglong or Lich that can flex, well, Lich, a lack of innate catch-up mechanic puts it at a disadvantage if it loses the die roll. And three, there are occasionally decks that go underneath this one's strategy. If you're playing a non-special summoning deck which doesn't care about Bathor Pops, you're going to have a good time against this list. All in all, it's clearly a tier 1 contender. And while currently its tops belong to mostly pros, as less experienced players pick up the deck, I'm sure they're going to see similar results. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, AJBYGO, Alex Perea, Candyman, Crispy, DimSum05, Frosty, King Magic Ruler, Night Mari, Lavender Lemonade, Mike Carlotti, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Seeker, Sir Tachyon, Space Dandy1993, Tyler Slacks, Wack Mina, Adam Provino, Adrian Bra, Emilia Lafondi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Furuya, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Bailey Williams, Blake Root, Black Candy, Chad Bortz, Chess Prime, Tropes Away, CJ Alex, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Dylan Conley, Dive Missile, Donnie Phillip, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fang Wong, FUTR, Hank Cheesecake, Inner Crescent, Isaac Jackson, Jane the Nia, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jose Luis Cortez, Juliet Julian, Corey Hess, Kurakaze, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arito Hansen, Mac the Moderate, Major Duncan, Meadow Edits, Mezzo Emers, Michael Oskvark, Muno Rashi, Nick Extreme 99, Nix Dolores, Papa Dragonite, Picnic Blasted, Pro P2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Sapphic Ash, Ashley, Sean Deal, Second Shine 55, Standards Objective, Swinkles, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski, Zach McKee, and Yuki A. Sorry, Sadie, I'm not cutting this one. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.